for the deep dive this morning. So welcome. Uh, it is Monday morning, the 27th, I believe, of February. It's our last deep dive of the year. Uh, so excited to be on here. We're going to talk about interest rates if you saw the video, but go ahead uh, and we're going to get started. Uh, let us know where you're watching from. As always, love to see people from all over the country uh, that join the deep dive, get their week started talking about the best topics, the most important topics really in real estate uh, so that you can be uh, the advisor, really the trusted advisor to the clients that you serve. So uh, grateful to have everybody on. I'm going to follow along here, try to open it up and um, and see if I can see everybody. Cassandra, see you joining there. Uh, no folks are, are joining right now. We'll give it just a minute before we get started. We're going to talk about interest rates this morning. I would say probably the, you know, the biggest topic that's being talked about right now is the rise in interest rates over the last several weeks and what that means uh, for uh, for the business, what that means for the spring market. So we're going to break that down uh, and talk about that here on the deep dive. Uh, Mike, see you there uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. Great to have you, Robin. Great to have you in New Jersey. Yvette, uh, Linda, great to see you there always. Uh, great to see everybody uh, there uh, coming in. Sean there in uh, Tallahassee, great to see you. Tom, good to have you. So many people that, that join the deep dive that want to be the educator in their market. You know, I think it's in a time like this that our job becomes more and more important, really being the educator, because there's so much noise. There, there is so much noise. Uh, we live in a time right now where I believe, you know, we have more accessibility to data and information really on any topic, but we're talking obviously about real estate today, more information on real estate than ever before. And people are more confused and don't know what to uh, believe. So it's our job to be out there uh, to deliver this information. So as always, join us here. We're going to get started in just a minute. Uh, see folks there uh, joining. I'm going to share my slides. Uh, you know, as always, if you're a KCM member, you can download these slides. I just went and checked uh, in the KCM member area. They're already uploaded there. There's a recording uh, of this deep dive in there. As you go out and use it to create content, maybe you're going to record a video, maybe you're going to Talk to somebody that you're working with that has questions about interest rates. So go in and use that. Go in and download these slides. You can customize them to you. Put your, you know, your brand and personalize them to uh, your brand as you put them in front of people, as you get the message out there. So uh, take advantage of that. But we're going to talk about interest rates. Uh, I mentioned that. So let me uh, get us started here and share my screen. Uh, I'll share it right here. So you can see that there, mortgage rates are trending up. Now, this is a look going all the way back to June of last year. And I want to sort of draw a couple of things here. First, you know, interest rates as we went throughout the, the you know, last six months of last year started to trend up in the fall. And really, that was essentially uh, because there was news saying maybe we're not out of the woods yet. You know, inflation is going to persist a little bit longer. There's more fear in the market and interest rates started to trickle up. And, you know, I've even said a couple of weeks ago uh, when I was on the deep dive that interest rates peaked back in November. And clearly, we may see another peak here uh, in the coming weeks. But uh, around November of last year, we started to get some uh, good news relative to inflation. Maybe it's not as you know, as bad as we thought and all those things and interest rates start to trend down. And what happened in the last few weeks was essentially the message that maybe we're not out of the woods yet. You know, a little bit hotter uh, consumer spending, a little bit hotter, you know, inflation data. And so we live in a time right now where the, the easiest way to say it is that, you know, uh, good news is bad news and bad news is good news. What do I mean by that? Um, you know, good news, meaning Consumer spending, that's a good thing, but it's ultimately bad uh, for inflation. And, and, and what is the, the opposite of that is we want to see inflation starting to come down. Um, and, and we've talked a lot about this, and I'm going to kind of break it down here in just a minute relative to the 10-year treasury, which is what we always want to watch uh, to understand uh, what's going on with inflation. But if we start to break this down and you know, maybe give you some perspective from Freddie Mac, uh, Sam Cater said this, the economy is showing signs of resilience, mainly due to consumer spending and rates are increasing. So consumer spending came out uh, last week, a little bit hotter than what uh, was forecasted. And that's kind of driven up rates here in the last uh, week. Before that, it was inflation a little bit hotter than expected. And it's, he goes on to say overall housing costs are also increasing and therefore impacting inflation 
which continues to persist. So, you know, as we start to look at this and we say, okay, what's, what's happening here? I'm going to break it down by the week and show you exactly that right now. But we're seeing this increase in rates due to some news that's come out, just, you know, instability in the market. And I think the you know, the, the the trend certainly here is we are still in a volatile market and expect that to say we're through inflation, we're not through inflation, you know, this sort of tug of war relative to that. But I want to bring you back to sort of a, a centering thought, if you will, relative to this conversation. So how do I bring the best advice to the clients that I serve, given all of this? So I'll give you a couple of things that you can certainly use these as posts, you can use these to record a video, you can use these to make content to be the knowledge broker out in the client out in the world. So first one is we always want to remember for the last 50 years the 30 year mortgage rate has moved in unison with the 10 year treasury rate. And you know maybe you've seen this before if you follow KCM or KCM member you're well aware of this but the clients that you serve may not be. And if you go back the last 50 years you see this sort of uh you know in tandem relationship with wherever the 10-year treasury goes, the 30-year fixed mortgage rate is going to follow. And the average spread uh, between the two is 1.7%. So think about, you, you take the uh, the 10-year treasury, you add 1.7%, you're going to be in the neighborhood of the 30-year fixed rate mortgage. So you want to be watching the 10-year treasury. You certainly want to have a great relationship with a trusted lender partner during these times to help people navigate uh, all of the you know, nuances and news and understand what that means. But if we take that average spread and we look at just the last, uh, you know, couple of months, beginning of this year, that spread has jumped up to an average of 2.7%, or most recently 2.9%. Uh, percent. So take the 30-year, uh, I mean, 10-year treasury at 2.9%, and you get the average daily rate of 6.88%. Now, I, I've long said that the spread there is a measure of fear. And that's fear economically, that's fear in the world, that's fear relative to our business. And, and as, we, as we go on, we want to continue to watch that. Now, I believe we have a job. A lot of this is out of, uh, out of our control, but what is in our control? What is in our control right now is to be professionals that are out in the market that help remove fear, help clients make the wisest decisions, fully informed, fully educated, Certainly not doing that from a perspective that says, I'm not watching the market, but let's take two perspectives here relative to interest rates. And probably you fit in one or two of these camps. One, you believe rates are going to go higher. Okay. So that's that's one perspective. The other one is you believe they may bottom out or even go lower as we go throughout the year. How do I give the best advice given that right now? Well, if you believe rates are going to go higher, then certainly you want to act now to where uh, you can lock in a preferable rate. We saw we started off here six and a half being the average 30 year fix. This comes from uh, Mortgage News Daily, 6.88% as we wrapped up Friday, right? So I would, I would be giving that advice, not certainly saying blindly, you know, uh, I think you should, you should act, but I want to understand what, what's driving the need to buy a home and give the best advice. If you believe they're going lower, I think most response of consumers is great. We'll wait till then. And here would be my question. What do you think everybody else is going to do in the market? When they see interest rates start to turn and start to go lower, they're going to jump in. If you do believe that, there may be a wind of opportunity. And I talked about this in the last deep dive that I was on maybe three weeks ago about this opportunity for the long-term home buyer. And we know certainly supply is constricted all over the country as we go into the spring market, certainly expecting supply to remain constricted. And yet we've seen uh, pullbacks on mortgage applications due to the rise in interest rates. So that creates opportunity for the long-term buyer that there may be a window. And certainly not saying go in and you know blindly buy something with the thought that you're going to refinance in two or three months. You have to be able to afford what uh, you're uh, you know, buying, but there is an opportunity if you believe they're lower to take advantage of buying right now for the long-term homeowner that you can refinance down the road. You know, if we look at this on a daily basis and we use Mortgage News Daily on this, 3.88, we literally in this month have gone from the beginning of the month being at 5.99% to 
you know, uh, 6.88%, almost 1% jump in this. Now, if you ask where I believe things are going, what I try to do is look at what are experts saying right now? A few things that I hear, volatile market, no doubt. Trying to forecast where rates are going uh, is is almost a fool's game, and you know nobody knows uh, that is the the truth. But what we can look at is what do we see happening with inflation? What do we believe the Fed is going to do right there, and how can we bring that knowledge to the clients we serve? Now, as I start to look at what experts are saying. I still see them saying we're going to be in a you know, more favorable rate environment towards the middle to the end of this year. Now, what that means exactly, could that mean the high fives, low sixes? You know, certainly I think that could mean that. The question is just timing. The question is, okay, what are the next uh, couple of uh, you know, weeks and months look like? What happens with inflation? You know, how much fear is in the market, which we can control. We can deliver the message to remove fear from the market. But I want to bring back a slide that I used a couple of weeks ago. We've overlaid in what's, you know, kind of happened with interest rates relative to what that does to demand. And it's this uh, graphic. Well, I'll show it here in just a second. That, that rise right there is what's driving more limited demand for buyers. And here's what this uh, this looks like. If you remember this uh, graphic, you know, we get above 7% to 7.5%, certainly going to see weak buyer demand. Six and a half to seven limited buyer demand. We spent a lot of this month and you know the first of the year in good buyer demand. You know we saw uh, January be a great month for folks coming out, and we've kind of crept up into this limited buyer demand area. So I think as we as we're prepared for that, the question is what's coming around the corner. I think we can expect you know this limited buyer demand to, to hang around, but but heading as we go throughout the year into a better scenario. So. Um, you know, our job right now is to take a graphic like this, be the educator, use it almost, uh, you know, green screen video, whatever the case is, uh, to get our message out there, post these on social media, and really be uh, the one that's bringing the perspective based on what your relevant market opinion is based upon the facts. That way you can guide your clients uh, the most effectively. I'm going to wrap up on this quote right here, and, and we'll pause for a second and take questions. So if you have those, put those in. Uh, Nadia uh, from NAR says this mortgage rates increased further this week following the bond market trend. The average rate of a 30 year fixed mortgage rose to six and a half percent from 6.3 percent the previous week. Even with the increase, owning a home is still affordable for Americans if they can put 20 percent down. The monthly, the median monthly mortgage payment is $1,880 for a median priced home. Now, that is good news, certainly if you add in the opportunity uh, to build equity in a home, it makes so much sense in the world. And I think we have to have perspective on that, you know, and, and bring that information. You know, Kate last week talked about the three ways to generate a listing right now. And if you didn't see that deep dive, I'd go back on, uh, if you're a KCM member, go back in the member area and grab that deep dive and watched it. watch it. It was great way to really think about how to have conversations in this market, given some of the uh, some of the dynamics that we face. So I'll turn it over to, to Jess here in a minute, but I want to remind you of this. We've talked a lot about expired listings over the last few weeks. It's still an opportunity in the market where listings are expired in the last two years. They have not expired. If you want to grab the Keeping Current Matters expired listing e-guide, you go to trykcm.com forward slash expired. So it's a great e-guide that breaks down really the, the four things that can happen with an expired listing. I'm not going to go through all those right now. I think Kate did those last week. Um, but, but if you don't have that information, it gives you great perspective on the psychology and really understanding how to best talk to someone that has a, a listing that hasn't sold and has expired. Okay. So Jess, I'm going to pause for a second and see if we have uh, folks on that had questions. I can look here as well, but... Uh, Hey, Dave. Um, I did see a couple of questions come through for sure. One from Adam who asked, do you think that home prices will come down to accommodate for the higher interest rates or do you think it will stay the course? Well, certainly, Adam, it's a great question. I don't think that's going to be a uh, right now something that's common in every single market. I don't think overall we're going to see home prices come down based on this rise in interest rates simply for the fact that there's not enough demand, I mean, not enough supply out in the market. Price is always going to be determined by supply and demand. I think in most markets, if something's priced right, 
uh, you know, it's it's got good visibility. It's in good shape. It's selling pretty quickly, uh, and uh, and so I don't think we're going to see that uh, nationwide. Awesome. And I did on the subject of pricing. Kim also asked another great question. She said, "What is the median price, uh, median home price per NAR?" Well, that's a good question, Kim. I don't have it committed to memory. It's about three hundred and sixty thousand, if I remember it correctly. But you can go to the National Association of Realtors and find that out, and that'd be, you know, for the entire country. Awesome. And then we did just have we've got a bunch of questions coming in now. Somebody had asked which okay. deep dive that you just referenced. A couple. Uh, of that minutes. was last week. Uh, okay. that Kate did the the deep dive on the three. Uh, best ways to generate a listing in this market. So if you go back in the member area, uh, if you're a KCM member, you can go back and grab that deep dive, watch it. It's 10 or 15 minutes like this one uh, and grab the slides as well. Awesome. Um, Looking back through here, somebody asked, um, uh, should, uh, I, ba, 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 ba. Should we advise sellers to wait for rates to go down? I think that's the question that's on a lot of people's minds. I, I, I want to go back to what I said earlier. So if somebody said, so if we say, okay, hey, we believe towards the middle of the year or end of this year, we're going to be in a lot better rate environment. And sellers, I think, naturally go, great, I'll wait till then. My response would be in that is, what do you think everybody else is going to do? One thing for sure is, is about the middle of last year till right now, we've seen less transactions. We all know that, uh, and we've talked extensively about that. What that means is oftentimes that means pent up demand. People that didn't do something are on the sidelines waiting to do something. When you see rates come down, I, I think the threshold for just psychologically where people go, we're getting back in, is 6%. We hit the high fives, and think you're going to see people jump in. So if you truly believe that um, interest rates are going to come down and, and you know, uh, somebody is, uh, uh, is thinking about that, I think there's, there's opportunity right now to bring a, for, for, let's talk about sellers and buyers, sellers to bring a property to market when we don't have enough properties on the market, right? So if everybody jumps in at that point, I would want to be before that. That would be my perspective on, on that question. Awesome. Thank you for that, Dave. And I know you've probably seen a couple of other ones come through. I did just want to mention that for members, um, KCM members, you can access your expired listings guide. I just pasted the link in the chat. It's in your training center under your e-guides and templates section. Yep. Perfect. Hey, if we missed your question, you certainly can email me at David at Keeping Current Matters. Uh, happy to talk about that. But as always, we are grateful for you joining the deep dive. Uh, we'll see you back here next week um, as we start March. All right. Take care. Have a great week.